Hi, today is February 28th, 2017, and uh, this is a Sweet Speaks. I, uh, I read a story about uh, how uh, Christian cops on the Sinai Peninsula are now fleeing from that peninsula. The story was dated on the 24th, so it's a few days ago. The reason is that uh, these Christians, seven Christians, have in a short time been killed by by members of the Islamic State, and uh, and and they are fleeing persecu persecution. And the, the IS sent a video, made a video threat to the to the cops, call him, calling them uh, it, crusaders, and they were going to do not so nice things to them. And uh, this is uh, a pattern. Christians are the most persecuted uh, religious group in the world as of today. And uh, it's especially dif difficult to be a Christian in Muslim majority societies and uh, the Islamic State, well, we know what they've been doing to Christians and as we can see from the Sinai Peninsula, they are active there too. And uh, what should we do? First of all, these are my brothers and sisters in Christ. and. Uh, this need to be stopped. Second, the Copts is the original population of Egypt. If that means anything, they were there first. They are the aboriginal aboriginals in Egypt. They were there before Egypt was Islamized. And, uh, and it's difficult for them to live in that society. And on Sinai, it's extra difficult now. But I'm not surprised, sadly. And this also shows how, how naive Western politicians, I don't want to call them leaders because they're not, how naive they are when they just want open borders, more, more or less, towards Islamic countries. And when the discussion seems, seems to be that if there ever is any problems with first or second generation immigrants, or for the matter, third generation immigrants in the West. And it seems like it's usually, the problems are usually connected with the Muslim immigrants and their, and their children and grandchildren. Then the solution always is to throw money at the problem. And uh, to, to have these large government programs and uh, to make sure or to try to make sure that people get a job and uh, support themselves instead of living on on government subsidies of any kind on the welfare state but that doesn't help islam doesn't turn into something nice just because uh, because muslims in norway or in canada might have a job there will still be lots of problems if islam turns into a large religion in the West, or a large teaching, I should say. I don't consider Islam a religion, I consider it, like Shert Wilder says in an interview with, um, with Esra Levant from the Rebel Media. I will post some links uh, in the box below, and you could check them out. As he says in an interview with Esra Levant, Islam is not really a religion. Is an ideology posing as religion. And what happens, for instance, if someone tries to leave Islam? They can be killed. And, uh, and that is in accordance with, uh, with, with the teachings of the Quran and of the Hadiths and, uh, and of Muhammad himself, what, what he said and did. And uh, for instance, there is a Green Party politician in Sweden named Revar Hassan, 
and he wrote an article on New Year's Day about the Islamization of Sweden. And you might argue that Muslims is they are still a minority group in Sweden. But you see, they don't even have to turn into a majority group before they start making lots and lots and lots of problems. And yeah, you can see that in France. You can actually see that with Sweden too now. With separate times at public ba baths for men and women. And that's because they were bending backwards to Islam. Don't don't uh, fool yourself into believing anything else. We got we got the left and the liberals in in the West and in Sweden with their identity politics, and somehow they all they always end up allying themselves with Muslims. The Democratic National Committee almost elected a Muslim. Uh, their leader, but okay, they didn't do that, and that was good in the United States. I mean, but I mean, this is a pattern that Islam is entering Western societies and it's eating its way into the institutions. They are sort of doing the same thing as the left did after 1968. And I don't have all the answers, but we can't go on like this. I mean. The Jews have Israel. Jews are escaping from France, for instance, moving to Israel. Some Jews are leaving Sweden, moving to Israel. But if Europe turns into an Islamic uh, part of the world, where are we supposed to go? To Canada? Well, that would be Muslim too by that. To the United States? Yeah, if they let us in. Because, well, if we manage to to make such a mess of the continent we came from, who knows, maybe we start voting for these policies there too. So, we have to wake up and, and smell the coffee and realize what's going on. And, by the way, we should, we should pray for the persecuted Christians and we should also vo voice our opinion about it and spread the information and news about this because this is serious and uh, yeah this is this is something that decides the fate of our continent and of Christians in the North Africa and the Middle East I mean I think that there should be a Christian Christian state in the Middle East or in North Africa, but that state needs to have a government that, that doesn't do the mistake of Lebanon, because Lebanon, they started taking in Muslims, and then Lebanon descended into chaos. And well, there's a lot of things that could be said about this. I will have to return to this topic again, I'm afraid, because I don't expect things to, to be nice and shiny tomorrow. I expect this conflict between Christianity and Islam, between Western ideas and Islam, and so on. I expect this conflict to go on. But remember, Islam is always the aggressor. And we have to start defending ourselves as a society and as a faith. Because this just can't go on anymore. And... Just to make this clear, because I know that people want to misunderstand, so just to make this clear, this has absolutely nothing to do with the, with, with the color of someone's skin. This has absolutely nothing to do with ethnicity. This has everything to do with the ideology of Islam. In this specific case, this is exactly what it's about. And Islam has to be fought. And that's all I have to say about this right now. I would like to thank the people who uh, are supporting this channel through Patreon and through PayPal. And uh, if you like this channel, please subscribe to my, cha my channel so you don't miss anything. Please like my videos. Please share my videos on social media. And you can also follow the Facebook pages that I will list in the box below. And I would also like to encourage you to support this channel. 
that could be done through PayPal or through Patreon. And I will, of course, include all the necessary information in the box below. This is a sweet speaks. Have a nice day.